Okay, so I took the covers off to see what we're working with. Hard to tell because the brake is probably engaged, the blade brake. It looks like somebody's been in here and has had an issue. Look at that. Get a good focus on it. Look at that. Somebody went in here looking at probably an angle cutter. I can chewed up the heck out of these pulleys. This bolt's done. The pulley should be okay. I'm going to take the tension off the, uh, the belts though so we can spin all the uh, pulleys to see which one's frozen. If this one's frozen, I don't need to take the deck off. Because I should be able to do this from the outside here because we got the nice scoop here. I should be able to fit my arm in there. I'll probably fight, cry, and scream at it, but at least I don't have to take the deck off. Not that the deck is very difficult to take off, I just don't have the space without moving a bunch of other stuff around. There's the uh, tension spring. I already put my vice grips on there. And it, uh, there we go. There we go. Now we got the tension. So that spins. That spins. Is this thing wants to tension right back up again. There we go. There. All right, that moves. That moves. That moves. That moves. That moves. That leaves one left. Okay, so we are in luck. Hopefully. I'm going to see what it takes to get this off of here. There should be a couple bolts underneath here. Yep. Yeah. Difficult to get to. One, two, three, four. Yeah. yeah. Somebody pumped it full of grease. I'm willing to bet this thing seized up. And, yeah, and they couldn't easily fix it. That, that's not a difficult fix. I mean, I mean, the worst comes to worst, I'll melt the nut off of there and replace the whole spindle. Hopefully not screw up this worse than it already is. I, just, I wish people would do things the right way. Isn't that so difficult to ask for? I can tell you right now. No, don't do that. All right, let me get a game plan together. Get this out of the way. Yeah, somebody pumped it full of grease too, probably after it froze up. Because, you know, God forbid, yeah, grease something before it breaks. Because this machine's never saw a speck of grease otherwise. Like, I'm looking at the drop, the kingpins up here, and they are dry as a bone. I'm going to bet these wheels are dry as a bone. Well, look into the price of a new spindle, and then we'll go ahead and grease everything else while we're waiting for these parts to come in. Let me see your tail of the blade. Yeah, the blade don't look bad. Well, now I know why they sold it, and honestly, why you would get rid of this mower for so cheap, for such a stupid little problem, and I'm sh that, that's ridiculous. So, ugh. Let me go ahead, go start looking up prices for a new spindle, and we'll go from there. We'll be back in a moment. Ha ha! Win for me. Ended up having to get the. I know it's a small air impact, but uh, this little sucker will remove up to an inch and a half bolts well, uh, for me at work. Now, I may, may overcharge it with air. And it's a cheap junk air, uh, uh, air impact. Jeez, I can't speak today. <clears throat> but man, this thing will handle 150 PSI like nobody's business. And I needed all 150 PSI because that thing did not want to move. I do not endorse sketchiness, but man, does it come in handy. Honestly, 
All right, so we're going to take these bolts off. We're going to replace the spindle, though. Get all this junk off of here. I wonder if there's nuts on the other side. I hope not. I think I might just uh, have to flip up the whole entire deck, won't I? Yeah, I will. All right, so we got these four bolts. We'll knock these four bolts out, drop the spindle off, get the blade off, and then we'll uh, put a new one on here. There's the grease fitting where somebody obviously said, oh my god, it's seized. Let me pump a bunch of grease in there and maybe it'll work. I don't think it worked. I really wish people would... <clears throat> Alright, here, here's a small rant for y'all. The reason they don't build great entry-level mowers anymore is because nobody wants to take care of anything. This is where I come in and people like me that buy this stuff up because people don't maintain it and then we fix it and resell it. People get angry at me on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist because they're like, oh, you're just buying and selling these at a profit. Blah, blah, blah. You know what? If people would take care of their mowers, do the yearly maintenance, I wouldn't have <clears throat> this side hustle where I do this stuff. Every year. <clears throat> or every couple mows, put a little grease in there. And that probably, this thing would have never seized up. It might still seize up over time, but they'll last a lot. And this mower's not that old. You wonder why there's so many mowers, cheap paint. Because they know they're not going to last very long. Because they know people aren't going to change the oil in them. They're never going to add grease into them. The same thing they do on all modern cars. And this is something that's been going on. And not They haven't been doing it lately, trust me. No, this has been going on a lot longer. Where people just don't maintain stuff. My dad was a mechanic. My grandfather was a mechanic. They could tell you all the way back to the 50s. 40s and 50s. People didn't take care of stuff. Nothing's changed. Manufacturers have gotten smart to the fact that people don't take care of stuff. They just want it to run. They don't care about anything else. Hell, if we didn't have to put gas in it, people wouldn't put gas in it. <sighs> Frustrating. Alright, well, let me uh, get to work on... Yeah, I mean, this is, no, jeez, I wonder if that's, that's been beat to hell. I wonder if I got to replace that fully. Yeah, it's still got a good hex to it. But, uh, yeah, we'll get to work on getting this out of here. I'll take the four bolts out, we'll get the blade off, we'll get a new spindle in there. So, next time you see, I'll have the new spindle in, we'll get it installed and get this mower running again. So, I can get out of my shop, I can get my next project in here, because I hate working on other people's stuff, and I don't know why I keep doing this. I am getting way too angry over simple stuff. All right, everybody, we'll see the spindle come in next. All right, so oh, we got our new spindle in. I've already put grease on it, made a mess of it. Uh, it's trying to, hard to pump grease into something that rolls around and hold it at the same time. Anyways, we got the blade on there, and we're just gonna slip it under, run the four bolts up and put the pulley on there and we'll test ride it once we get everything back together so let's get this on the way yeah ew anyways ew. make sure the grease fittings fit it in a position where it can be easily reached not like the uh, owner is ever going to grease it anyways but I'd like to think he would. I'm going to drop the deck though. Alright. Because, I mean, obviously he hasn't greased anything. I went ahead and greased all the other spindles too. Um, greased everything else on the machine. Hmm, let me get some lock pick for these. Tight goes a long way. This is going to be a vibrating piece, so it's a good idea. Don't need a lot, just enough.
Don't forget to give it a good shake every once in a while. <laughs> Make it, um, your Loctite, just so it tends to separate itself over time if you're not using it all the time. I don't use the Loctite in my shop all the time. I use the Loctite they give us for work, um, but I don't use that stuff in my house because that would be stealing. But I go through that stuff like crazy because who would figure construction equipment you need to use a lot of Loctite for working on that kind of stuff. Alright, oh, come on. Oh, of course, this one's going to be the one that doesn't want to go easily. Now, if I recall, these should be the wrong size. Why not? That's a little more like it. 13 millimeter. Um, I'm not cranking them completely down quite yet. I want to get them all kind of set up where they need to be. Oops. Now this is a locking nut right here, with these two pin marks here. That helps you know, push in the threading so it locks it in place. Guess that's good. Sucker down. Matter of fact, I should probably run my air compressor now, too. This one didn't originally have a lock in one, it had a lock washer on here. I'm gonna save this. It's nice to have these big old lock washers around. Alright. Let's get these belts put back into place. Come on. Um, and then I'm gonna put the tensioner back on. Oop. Drop quotes out of the way. So, everything in place? Yep. Alright, before we tension the spring, make sure our belt's in the right locations. Yep. And I just dumped my arm right in that grease that I left on the tire. Where's my rags? Yeah. Either way. Alright. Ooh, nice, nice kink dang over oh, there. Alright, I'm gonna put these covers back on. And start to mower up and run the blade, and we'll see how everything runs. So, back to you in a moment. Here. 
cut all this stuff out. This mower. Fuck this mower completely. Oh, I wonder. <laughs> Alright, so what sensor did he cut off that I absolutely need to run this blade? There's almost every safety sensor has been cut or disabled or bypassed on here. And I'm willing to bet he probably did something to do that. Lord help me. Save me from the idiots. Okay. So I figured out what the blade problem was. This safety seat contraption, basically he took a safety suite, a seat, uh, zip tied it and taped it down. Four prongs, going into this interesting connector right here, which has four wires, well a jumper, three wires and a jumper. Uh, we got white, black, we have black, white, black, and then the jumper here. And it took me a little bit of digging to figure out what was going on because the motor will start with it disconnected, but the blade won't engage. And this is basically, what, from what I can gather, a two-stage switch. It has an ohm resistor. And I, after reading about these, I understand why people disable these ones in particular. Most safety seat, uh, switch seats, you're not on it, it doesn't run. So it's very simple. And if you flip your motor over, it's a good thing to have. This is a crock of crap right here, John Deere. And I know what's going on a whole bit about not trying to outsmart the engineers earlier, but I don't blame people. Because I've read stories that if you bounce just a little bit, it'll kill the mower. And that's stupid. That's a stupid design. And all it is is pretty much trying to guarantee people can't, you know, kill themselves. I say let people kill themselves, and they shouldn't be able to sue if they find out they uh, changed out these safety switches. Because you're bringing it on yourself at that point. That said, what do we do? Well, as you can see, I got a little card in here because we got four prongs in here. And right there. One, two, three, four. And here's the trick where this little bypass comes in here, where it's a little jumper. It connects. There's another connector on top of here that connects these two middle plugs. See how there's nothing plugged in there? And, uh, white, uh, black and white and uh, solid black. It connects those two together, which jumps over to here, and it's pretty much a trick. And that's how it pretty much triggers the, the two-stage switch, ohm switch. So, I took a piece of business card and slid it into the connector there. Another way is to cut the uh, connector off. I'm not, not going to do that. If somebody wants to replace the switch, they should be able to just replace the switch, put a new one in there, and be done with it. That's up to them. This is a load of crap. And I've watched a couple of videos of people riding around showing what would happen if they hit a bump in their lawn. And that thing disables the mower. And then you got to start it back up again, engage the blades. John Deere, I'm a little disappointed in you. But then again, I'm always disappointed in John Deere because they suck. That said, uh, let's start the mower. Oh, uh, I changed the oil. See the spot of oil there? Because I missed uh, chain, put new spark plugs on, a new air filter is in here where, the, you know, a squirrel chewed up the box or a rat, mice, or whatever. New fuel filter, oops, and new oil filter. We got, this thing is set to go. I got the box on jumper because there's another peculiar issue I read about. This is your backup safety switch. Oops. 
backup safety switch it's supposed to be connected to this button basically you press that button to keep your blades engaged while you reverse stupid from what I understand this connects to um, the relay and jumps the relay so you have a constant on all the time even with the key switch off apparently it will stay on so I think that's what's actually killing this battery what I might do is replace this with like a toggle switch. So if you want to reverse back, cool, flip the switch. You don't want to, so you don't have to hold that stupid button all the time. We'll see. Well, let's get this thing fired up. Matter of fact, I, don't, I probably don't need this. This has been on slow charge for a while again. And it could be that the battery's just shit too. I mean, I won't rule that out. I mean, the battery don't look old. And I think they probably replaced it thinking that was a bad battery. <clears throat> All right, uh, give me a moment here. Let me set the camera up, and we'll get this thing rolling. Blade works. Motor works. Model works. Gotta let it run a little bit longer. Well, I didn't get very far that time, did I? Uh, basically, it threw a belt. The blade belt, to be more specific, right here. Uh, got about, I don't know, a quarter to a half acre through my back lawn. And it threw the belt, and then I put it back on there. And double check the online diagram for rotten the belt. Maybe I put it on wrong, I'm thinking. I mean, it sounded fine, and all of a sudden I started making a bunch of racket, and then poof, popped off. I was like, okay. Went online, checked the diagram, put the belt back on there, ran it again, and not even two minutes later, it popped the belt. So I was like, okay, something's going on. So I figure uh, I've got maybe a bent pulley or something, because when it uh, froze up, all that pressure was being put on something. And it kind of looks like one of those pulleys might be bent back there. Well, it definitely looks like it's bent. So we're going to drop the whole deck. Um, let's see. It looks fairly easy. We got a clip there. We got that clip there. And there's one up front. And then reverse the two clips on the other side. And that should drop the deck right off. I'm not going to videotape that because... Um, I don't have a good angle to do it for y'all, and I don't feel like hand holding it again and making a complete mess of it. I got it parked sideways in my garage like this so I can drop the deck, slide it into my garage. That way I can get back to working on this stupid mower. <sighs> oh well. So, give me a minute here, I'll get this deck off. It's kind of what I don't feel like doing after um, everything else I've had to do today, but... Let me get this deck off. We'll get to work on this thing and figure out what's wrong. And hopefully we can fix it easily. So, catch you in a second here. Well, good thing the uh, deck belt was that giving me issues because the drive belt is about to fail. And I didn't. I thought I grabbed a hold of it. I must have grabbed a hold of a good spot when I grabbed a hold of the belt. And I just didn't feel the, like, there's a few areas that are not terrible, but this belt is so loose, too. That's entirely too loose. Uh, so, well, we're going to get this belt off of here. Matter of fact, I don't even know if I have to do any pulleys here. Uh, bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, basically, uh, we got to start from the PTO, uh, which we got a bracket holding belt there. So what we'll do is probably unbolt this. I'm not going to videotape this because that would be just too much of a pain. But uh, I'm going to unbolt this and drop the uh, PTO off. Now, looks like I'm going to have to undo the steering shaft. This is pretty standard for most mowers for drive bolts because it goes around this stuff. So I'll probably have to unbolt the um, steering shaft bolt, slide that out. I'll probably use a replacement. Pull the uh, steering column out or up. And then from there, probably gonna have to undo these bolts here. The pulleys don't look bad. They sprint free. Yeah, they barely grabbing anything. That would probably explain the surging issue I was having. And then uh, that'll take the tension off and you know these guides that you are not bending out of the way easily. So you're gonna have to undo these bolts here. 
easiest way to do is probably going to be an impact um take this stuff off to keep it from spinning too much and then we'll take the old belt off, belt off and we'll put the new belt on so as i said pto undo that drop it unconnect it undo this slide the steering shaft out undo these two pulleys these are your tension pulleys too by the way um and then that belt and if you have to you kind of got to sometimes shim shove this thing a little bit i don't think i gotta undo the spring i'm not sure how easy it would be to undo the spring i don't know that won't be too difficult springs i'm not sure you can see it that well but it's right about there so bear with me for a minute i'll get this belt changed out so we'll see you in a second okay yep that pull that belt is done there's the new belt nice and clean and something i missed this is another belt guide this is on the back of the hydrostatic transmission at the uh pulley side and oh man talk about fun to get to right there probably probably designed to yeah probably have to take the wheel off or take the uh, tins off here to get to it um i was able to get an open end wrench on there and loosen it up i mean it wasn't in there super tight luckily but boy that is that's a pain in the butt to get to so eh, let's get the belt back on there and get this mower back on the ground we'll get the deck back in there because the deck should be good i'll explain what i ended up doing to the deck a little bit in a few minutes Yeah, just when you thought I was done, this stupid mower keeps pulling me back in. Basically, we got most of the way, three quarters of the way done my uh, mowing my lawn. Then the mower started popping, backfiring, losing power. And I was like, huh, oh, that's weird. Looked under the hood and the fuel filter there, listen, there's no gas in there. And I'm like, huh, okay. Took my knife smacked the fuel pump a few times all of a sudden it started drawing fuel in there started running again and then a minute or two later it started doing it again <sighs> likely and i knew i should have changed it out before the fuel pump is dead and we got the new one in luckily i mean these things are cheap and they they do both what it basically is a diaphragm in here it uses vacuum from the motor to actuate the pump the diaphragm back and forth and it flows fuel in up to there pretty simple problem is the diaphragm is made of rubber i think or plastic probably rubber and it dries out especially when you're using that non-ethanol i mean the ethanol fuel in there it that's crap for everything i mean uh, let's just face, face facts ethanol is the fuel of the devil so let's go ahead and get this apart hopefully it'll go pretty simple screwed oh okay there it is good it didn't fall too far oh what are the fires okay let's undo our vacuum line this is a new vacuum line. The old one was all dry rotted. I kind of hoped that was the issue right there. It was already duct taped together. And move this clip out of the way. I like Lyman uh, pliers, especially for doing these fuel clips. Because it just grabs them bright. And let's make a mess. Huh. Surprise. Surprise. First one on. And that was the one's going to leak. All right. Hmm. Ah, oh, that is ethanol gas. I know that smell. Let's plug our vacuum line back in. All right. And then put our screws back in. Like I said, not a hard job. Be careful, these screws tend to strip out pretty easily. Nah, that one's 
feels like it's stripped out. All right. And then let's reclip the line here. Luckily, there should be plenty of fuel in there. Oh, yeah. I'll have to sink a longer screw into that one. Um, and then basically, we're going to fire this thing up, get rid of this, throw this in the trash before it stinks up my garage. If there is any follow up to this video at this point, it's going to be me lighting this lawnmower on fire and me dancing around it naked because I am absolutely tired of this mower at this point. I'm going to fire it off up screen. I'm going to go run it around, make sure everything works. And when it's done, I am getting it the heck out of my garage and I will never see it ever again as long as I shall live because this has been by far one of the most frustrating mowers I've had to deal with in a long time. That said, uh, give me a moment and we're going to go. Oh, I forgot I was going to do that too. Yeah. <laughs> I still got to wire up the switch there for the backup switch there because I forgot about that while I was mowing. Um, but that's going to be off screen. Uh, like I said, I'm going to fire this thing up, get it out of here, make sure it runs, and then I'm going to get rid of it. Uh, give me a minute here. I'll do a, a close out on this, let you know how everything goes, I guess. So give me a moment here. Let me fire it up and see, we'll see if this thing catches on fire or it's gone. All right, everybody. That is it. This mower is finishing up my lawn and that's it. It is getting out of my garage and it's going someplace else. And I hope to never see it ever again. This mower has just been an absolute terror. I fix one thing, then something else breaks. And I am just absolutely tired of it. That said, I do appreciate y'all coming by. Uh, please like, subscribe, let me know what you like, let me know what you dislike. And we'll see you again. And thank you again for stopping by Zombie's Garage.